Hey guys, it's your Stogie Sister coming back at you today with the promised Heartbreaker Coffee and Heartbreaker Cigar Ezra Zion Cigar of the Month Club pairing. This was for April of 2022. This is the cigar. And you saw the coffee bag on the picture of this video. This cigar is a 6x52 Toro. All we know is that it has a Colorado wrapper. Um, we don't know what the binder and filler is, but we do know it's been aged between three to seven years. Let's see if we can get this off. Okay, it came off and only tore itself a little bit. Let's get into it. Cigar smells like oak and spice. What is going on in my mouth? I think it's aggressive cedar, cinnamon, maybe a red pepper. The draw is also really tight, so if it doesn't open up within the first uh, first third, I'm going to use a draw tool on it. Yeah, there's definitely something stinging my tongue. The retro hell was smooth. I was really surprised, and it just and the retro hell just brought out a generic wood. Now I'm trying the cigar first because if I drink coffee first, sometimes for me that can kind of skew the flavors of the cigar or make it more coffee forward than it normally is. Now, how I made the coffee? I brewed a double shot of espresso and threw in some just plain milk in it. I did not use uh, half and half or 2% just whole milk and cold milk. I didn't uh, froth up the milk this time. Now, I did take a picture of the shot of espresso in my cup that I'm going to put in the video here. And I'm putting that in because that crema, which is that light brown um, sort of caramel looking foam that's on top of the shot of espresso is fantastic. That's what it's supposed to look like when you pour a shot of espresso. Okay, now enough talk, let's try the coffee. Oh! Um, the coffee is uh, fruity and brighter than I was expecting. Now the reason why I didn't make it into a mocha or an official latte was because I didn't want it to drown out the flavors of the coffee. Um, that's probably why I hadn't noticed those fruity flavors before in the last few days when I've been making mochas with it. That's delicious. Okay, let's try it with this. Okay, I feel I got citrus and a bitter sweet chocolate back to that fruit and the fruit is more like ah berry fruit not sweet berries not strawberry but more of your tart berries so it's a little bit bright and a little bit tart but in espresso form, the espresso is taking the dominant flavor profiles in my palate over this cigar. It goes well together, but it is sort of dominating the palate. I 
I should add that I added just enough milk to change the color of the coffee, not to uh, overpower the coffee. Wow, now that I'm tasting that bright berry fruit, it's really hard to taste anything. <clears throat> it's really hard to get that recognition out of my brain. The retro hill of the cigar brings out that berry. And cedar. Cedar at the end of the finish. Okay, interesting. Now, I also brought out a root beer to try, which I'm going to do a little bit later after I finish the coffee. I know, weird combination, but I can't help myself. This is not going to be a, a traditional cigar review. I just wanted to give you an overall profile with the coffee. And if the cigar changes while I drink the coffee, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I'm not going to. So I wanted to talk to you about something that's been happening to many cigar reviewers, including yours truly. YouTube has been uh, basically putting marks against people's channels and or disciplining channels for basically promoting tobacco products. Now, I am not a monetized channel. I am too small and I try to be very careful with how I phrase my thoughts and expressions especially in written comments like some of you have asked me where to buy something and I will say I do not believe I can legally do that you know <clears throat> check online like that is how I come across with it because honestly I don't know your age and there's no way for me to verify that unless I get a picture of you holding up your driver's license and a scanned copy of your driver's license so I can verify your age. And then if you're not in this country, then I need to look at the legal smoking age of your country and yada yada. I don't want to do that. That's pretty smooth. Now, I do keep my channel pretty family friendly. I don't curse. I try not to wear t-shirts that have something children might be interested in, like a, um, a car favorite cartoon character or Harry Potter gear because I don't want to attract that kind of audience. It doesn't matter. My personal beliefs on the characters, you know, I enjoy cartoons and I enjoy Harry Potter, but I really try not to promote that on this channel. I also try to keep it family friendly because my sister has her kids around her sometimes when she's watching my videos and I don't want anything to to not be friendly to them. Now my family knows I smoke cigars, the kids know I smoke cigars, and when my niece asked me if she could smoke a cigar, I said I'd be happy to buy one for her when she turns 21. But until then, she's just going to have to wait. So, that's one reason why I was surprised when YouTube hit my channel with a warning on the video, um, Moldy Cigar, oh no, let's try a Herrera Esteli Quadrado instead. Because one, all the things I just mentioned, and two, that video did a lot of explanation on mold versus plume, and what I'm, you know, why you shouldn't smoke that type of cigar, etc. So, and why that video of all videos? I think it's because it's gotten a lot of views, probably one of the most in my whole uh, repertoire. And that video is also one of my oldest. So it's just, it's interesting. But it leads me to the fact that they want me to restrict my viewers to 18 and older. And which would force viewers to sign in to watch my channel and to sign in as a, a legal 18 year old 
which is funny because the smoking age is 21 in America. Okay, I'm definitely getting caramel with the previous spice flavors and cedar now along with that coffee. But here's the problem with restricting my videos to 18 years and older. One, it forces people to sign in. And two, most people that watch these channels are not signed in. And they're not subscribed viewers. So, and, and I know I was a culprit of that for many years. I Well, not for many years. I will say at least two years before I made my own channel. One to two years. I watched a lot of videos without signing in. I just didn't create an account. I didn't want to with YouTube. I didn't want them to have that information. I didn't want to go through the hassle. So that means everybody's uh, everybody's viewers are going to go down and their views are going to go down. They're not going to get as many subscribers. And this is even for non-monetized channels. Now I have heard one cigar reviewer who is probably the largest out of everybody has closed all his, chan his channel and deleted all his videos off of YouTube. Now he was monetized. He did have sponsors and, and commercials on his channel and all that. And he obviously feels quite strongly about it. Now I respect a private company's right to run their business the way they feel fit as long as it's not hurting anybody and I especially like it when they have policies in place that prevent discrimination because I believe that's important so on one hand I need to respect this company's right to say hey restrict your viewers to 18 and older on the other hand I have seen other channels where there are actual laws being broken or lead you to believe that laws are being broken because they're faking it and I'm talking about violence I'm talking about um, you know hate crime type stuff or sexual innuendos or you know all those kind of things that I don't want to get into. So if these channels are being monetized and they're not being punished, why am I? That's how I feel. On one hand, I respect their right to run their business. On the other hand, I feel like it's an unjust request. So I don't know what's going to happen, guys. If I get another hit and a strike against my channel, it will be my first strike against the channel. I'm not exactly sure what all that entails. I have to go back and read the contract, but it, it could not be good for me. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on this, and I'll come back at the end of the sky to let you know if there's any changes. Okay guys, gotta make this quick. The wind picked up again. Flare profile changed after the first few draws. The cigar loosened up, and that intense spice and cedar I was getting was joined by the caramel, cream, and was that way for the rest of the cigar. With that spice just tapering right off, was well balanced by the caramel and cream. Went good with the coffee, and it went good with a creamier root beer. I don't know how it would go with a more sarsaparilla intense root beer. But there you have it. Thanks for watching the video. I do appreciate it. Please let me know your comments about what I was saying earlier. Moving forward, you may be required to sign in and be 18 or older to watch. We'll see you next time. And until then, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and take care of your neighbors.